Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Pallavi Gogoi of Krishna Kanta Handy State Open University. Welcome to today's program. Today I shall take up Unit 7 which is the third video on Kiki and Darawala and we shall discuss the major themes, style and language of the poem Wolf. The course is Chen English, Semester 1, Block 1. So let us quickly begin. First I shall start with a table of contents where we shall discuss the learning objectives followed by major themes, style and language and then we shall sum up the entire unit and I shall leave you with a few questions to check your progress followed by the references. Coming to learning objectives, after going through this third and final video of unit 7, the learner will be able to explore the relevant themes pertaining to the poem, grasp the style and language employed in the poem and also appreciate the symbolism and significance of the poem. Coming to the major themes, the first theme that appears is fragmented memories. It is evident when we read the poem, we come across this particular theme. The narrating voice of the poet reverts back to a time when he knew of wolves that lived and prowled around their neighborhood. The poet reminisces how his mother would put him into bed at night when he would not want to sleep. She would simply make him believe that if he did not fall asleep, the wolves with their sharp sense of smell would find out and reach him easily. You may have noticed this common bedtime trick that all mothers do try on their little children just so that they become obedient and sleep on time. The poet vividly recalls the memories of hearing wolves cry at night in the nearby forests that bordered their village home. Perhaps this is why the poet had always felt that the wolf or the pack of wolves were never far away from him as a child. In fact, through the wonderful description of the poet, anyone reading the poem would feel as though a curious wolf were hiding from the reader somewhere nearby. The haunting quality of memories that remain ever fresh in the mindscape even with the passing of time is beautifully captured in the words of the poem. Although the poem only represents the poet's imagination of the living wolf or wolves in the form of fragmented memories, we receive a complete picture of what it must have been like in the past when we put all of these images together. Memories have a surprising way of approaching our thoughts and leaving us emotionally charged. Sometimes memories come to us in a rush and appear unexpectedly and at other times they come in flashes and in fragmented forms. We may not always remember or recall certain memories, but memories have a way of making themselves felt, just as the memory of the wolf does in the mind of the poet. The next theme that is evident in the poem is animals in danger. The wolf in the poem occupies the mind of the poet long after its kind ceases to exist in their vicinity. The existence of the wolf or wolves in that area almost turns into a myth which saddens the poet. If the presence of wolves had haunted the mind of the poet as a child, it is now their absence that disturbs his peace, his peace of mind that is. The poem thus expresses the alarming concerns of animal killing and the everyday threat to their existence. Further, it points towards the dangers of the widespread man and animal conflict. For an instance, closer home, you may have heard or read news reports on the burning issues of rhino poaching even within the protected area of Assam's national parks. If such inhuman and illegal practices go unnoticed, then perhaps the day is not far when the future generations will find these vulnerable animals in the list of extinct species. The poet leaves an impression of a similar concern while wondering how the wolves are now unheard of in the forests bordering his village. This is a special fragment of memory or feeling that the poet's daughter shall never know of as he did in his childhood. Animals are often seen as insentient beings but in truth they are more sensitive than most of their human counterparts who instead of living in harmony with the natural world turn into destructive forces. The poet contains a hidden message that if animals are wiped out so mercilessly, their future generations will never know the value of animal life to mankind. It is necessary for us to respect the natural world first and to ensure that the children of the future learn to respect the invaluable gifts of nature in the form of animal life. Nothing can really justify the killing or slaughtering of animals in any way. Coming to a style in language, 
The poetry of Darwala contains striking imagery that easily captures the imagination of the reader. In the poem Wolf, the opening lines itself creates a hypnotic effect on the reader's mind with the revelation of the mysterious presence of a wolf in the poet's memory as expressed in the opening lines. Moreover, the poet recreates the haunted midnight memories of his village and of his village home at the end of the forest. Just as he remembers wolves prowling, quote-unquote, around his night, a child's night of the bygone years. The learner will note that the poem has a dream-like quality as the wolf literally exists in the realm of the poet's imagination. The play of memory, the to and fro, into the then and now is skillfully presented in the poem. Also, one can almost feel the silent and measured movements of the wolf in the dark forest followed by its piercing cry that ruptures the tranquil of those old nights. There is a silent restlessness in the recreation of the imaginary wolf outside the poet's childhood home. The memory of his own restlessness as a child and the restlessness thinking about the slaughtered wolves. Also, one finds that the image of the wolf is not only dreamlike but is also received in fragments where the reader is gradually introduced to the fire-lit presence of the wolf with its black snout, extended paws, sulfur body, standing ears, sharp sense of movement, quick nose and dark touch of his eyes. The poem is easy to comprehend as it is written in simple language. So, it is suggested to a learner to go through a poem on his or her own. Finally, I shall sum up the unit. After having gone through the unit, you will be able to discuss the life and works of the poet K.K. Darwala. A thorough reading of the unit will enable you to further explain the content, context and the relevant themes pertaining to the text of the poem Wolf. Also, you will be able to grasp the poetic techniques employed in the prescribed poem. The study of the unit should enable you to explore and enrich your knowledge on the other interesting works by the poet. Here are the questions to check your progress. These are the possible questions. Here is the reference. All the best, dear learner. Thank you.